Hello. In this video, we're going to look at taking graphs of trig equations and turning them back into functions or equations. So let's look at this one. We have the graph of what appears to be a trig function. It looks like a wave, although we only have one section of it. But we could imagine this wave continuing on and on and on and on like this. And we would say, oh yeah, this, this looks like a sine or a cosine graph. But what's the equation for the graph? Is it sine or is it cosine? And what are the values? What's the amplitude, the A value? What about the period? What about the horizontal translation, vertical translation? We want to figure out all these values. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out maybe some of the easy ones. In particular, I think it's relatively simple to find the A value, the value that would go in front. So if you had let's say y equals a and then your trig function, the a would be the amplitude or the vertical stretch. And normally, let's say we were working with, uh, well, I mean, I think this looks kind of like a cosine graph. It, normally a cosine graph would be a valley. Uh, this looks like a peak, so it looks like maybe a reflected cosine graph. But regardless, let's say we were working with a cosine graph. This would go from positive one down to negative one. But the graph that we have goes from positive 3 down to negative 3. So we can see that instead of going from 1 to negative 1, we go from 3 to negative 3. So that would suggest an A value in front of positive 3, because 1 times 3 would be 3. And like we said, it looks like the graph has been reflected so that it now, instead of going like a valley, looks like a bit of a hill. If this is cos x, this over here would be negative cos x. So we're thinking that it's probably a negative 3. Now that's, that's some pretty good news and if we were to put cos x we could start to see the rest of it. Well we know the period for cos is 2 pi. The whole process takes from 0 to 2 pi. And over here we have a 2 pi as well so that looks pretty good. We know the cos graph starts down here and then ends at the same place. Well, that starts down here and then ends at the same place. Um, yeah, I think we would be good to go. This looks like it captures the graph above. Now, maybe you'd say to yourself, well, this doesn't actually look like a cos graph to me. Maybe you're thinking it looks like a sine graph. And to highlight that, you could imagine here we have kind of our up and down wave shape. Maybe that green section looks like a sine graph. How could you figure out uh, the equation in terms of sine? Well, it's got the same situation where the sine graph normally would go like this from 1 down to minus 1. So from 3 to minus 3. So, so we're going to have a 3 in front of the sine function for a vertical stretch of 3. But the sine graph, of course, starts at 0, 0. And this graph over here is starting at pi over 2 and 0. So that means that the graph that we started with, the normal base sine graph, the base graph, has been converted, it's been translated into this new graph over here. And it looks like that base graph has been shifted by pi over 2 to the right. The way we would write that is minus pi over 2. Remember, if we want to make a horizontal translation, we have to flip the sign. So minus pi over 2 moves it all positive or to the right of pi over 2. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And that would be the equation if we were to write it with sine. So either one of these equations will give us this graph. And if you wanted, you could type them into Desmos and guarantee that yes, this indeed gives us our picture. All right, let's try one with a little more, uh, well, just a little more flair to it. Here we have what looks a little simpler. We, we, we would say, okay, this looks like a wave. This looks like a basic sine graph, right? We have the peak and then the valley. Yeah, yeah, this looks like a sine graph. Sine graph goes from one to minus one. And this graph goes from four to minus four. So we're thinking an A value of probably four. And because it goes up and down, it doesn't look like we have to deal with any kind of uh, 
reflection at all. But if we look at that x-axis, this is where it's a little trickier. Normally the sine graph would go from 0 all the way to 2 pi. That would be one period for the sine graph. But here we don't have a 2 pi, we just have a 2. Well, that's a little bit weird. Uh, it, it means that something's happened to those x values. In particular, they've all been stretched. The, the normal sine graph, 2 pi, if we, which you want if uh, you rate it as a decimal, 6.28, the original sine graph would actually be a lot bigger. It would go like this and it would go all the way over here to 6.28. This graph is smaller. It's been stretched to be smaller along those x values. But by how much? How can we figure out the exact values? And here we're going to use a bit of a formula. There's a little formula that tells you the following. Period is equal to 2 pi over b. What this formula says is if you're writing uh, a trig function, something like this, y equals a sine bx minus c plus d, kind of like the general trig equation, the b value right here is going to be related to the period. And if you know the b value, you can find the period, or if you know the period, you can find the b value based on this formula. So looking at our graph, we know the period is clearly 2. So let's go ahead and plug that into our formula. 2 equals 2 pi over b. Now you can maybe spot the value of b that we need in this formula, but if not, we'll do a little bit of algebra. Cross multiply up the b to get 2b equals 2 pi, divide by 2, and b equals pi. So we have our second value. We have the b value of pi the a value of 4, and it doesn't look like there's been any other changes, so I think we can go ahead and write 4 sine pi x. And that would be our equation for the graph. Now, I'd encourage you to try this instead as a coast graph. Imagine the coast graph starts here. We have our valley as it goes over here. What would be the equation for a cos function. Pause the video and see what you come up with. All right, hopefully you gave that a try. The a value or the vertical stretch should be the same. And the b value will be the same because the period is still the same. But in this case, the original cos graph, which again, if I draw the base graph down here, the base graph for cos starts there and then goes down. But this graph starts at 0.5. That means we have to shift the graph 0.5 to the right. And that would be your equation for a cos function. All right, now we have another question here. We're given this graph. Again, it looks like a trig function. It goes up and down and up and down. We need to determine the equation. So pause the video and see what you can come up with for the different values. All right. I think this looks like a sine function. This looks like sine because y equals sine x, the base graph, would look like this. But a lot of things have happened to this graph. In particular, it looks like it's been moved up because normally the point would be at 0. And now the beginning of the graph is at 4. That's going to represent a vertical translation, or in our letters, that's going to be the d value, because the graph has been vertically translated up by 4. Based on that, it looks like it goes from the 4 up to the 6, which is going up two values, and then down two values. Again, remember, the normal sine graph goes up 1 and down 1. So that looks like an a value of 2. Now, thankfully, the period here is 8, and that value has a formula. We know that 8 will equal 2 pi over b. That means 8b equals 2 pi. And so b equals 2 pi over 8, or pi over 4. So we can put that over here. Now, the c value, that's the horizontal translation. It looks like it starts where it's supposed to start, so we don't have to have anything for C. 
and now we could write y equals 2 sine pi over 4 x plus 4. Now technically I would lose a half mark for that because if you look here the x axis is actually in a t and the y axis is actually a v of t. So if I wanted uh, full marks I would have to write this as v of t because it's not actually y and I have to write this as a t. So I have to stick with the variables that are given to me in the graph. But otherwise the a, b, c, and d values are good to go. Now you might have thought that the b value, because we have a formula, is pretty easy and the other values are hard. And if that's the case, I can actually give you formulas for the a and the d. I don't personally use the formulas. I like to kind of look at it and see what kinds of translations have been applied. But if you're a formula kind of person, I'll show you two formulas for finding the a and the d value right away. For the a, the formula is as follows. Top minus bottom over 2. And for d, the formula is top plus bottom over 2. In other words, let's look at the graph and we find the top value is at 6. And we find the bottom value is at 2. So to find a, we do 6 minus 2 over 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. Yeah, that's what we got. That makes sense. For D, we do 6 plus 2 over 2, 8 over 2, which is 4. Now, if you want to use these formulas, top minus bottom over 2 and top plus bottom over 2, you are more than welcome. In fact, along with the period formula, it's a great way to find three of the four values. But you do still want to think about them in terms of translations because there's not going to be a formula for that C value and you do need to understand what you're doing here versus just plugging away in formulas. Now that being said, if you want to use formulas, uh, go ahead and give them a try. We have a function here and we need to find the A, B, C and D values so we can write the equation as a graph. And just as a hint here, I think this one would be more natural to be a coast graph. So I'm going to recommend you find the A, cos, B, X minus C plus D. Go ahead and find all those constants. All right, hopefully you gave it a try. If you use the formulas, you should end up with the following. A is going to be equal to 1 half. But because the graph goes up instead of down, Right, remember the base coast graph should look like a valley. We're going to have to add a negative sign to the A. B is actually just going to be 1 because the period is 2 pi. So when you use the formula, you just get a B of 1. C will be 0 because it hasn't moved left or right. And D will be 1 half. So that gives you Y equals negative 1 half cos X plus one half. All right. Let's go ahead and try another one. Again, please pause the video and see what you come up with. Um, you could use cos or sine, um, but I think again, if I'm giving you a bit of a hint, I would recommend that you use the cos on this function. So find A, B, C, and D for this graph. All right, assuming you gave that a try, the top is 1 and the bottom is minus 5. That'll give you A equals 3. B, based on the values, will be pi over 3. I'll hold off on C, and D will be negative 2. Now, I said it was a cos graph, and that's because I envisioned the graph starting here and then going down. So based on that, it looks like the graph is one unit to the right from where it should be. So that means the C would be a plus one. Uh, and of course, when we plug it in, we do a subtraction. So it's gonna be Y equals three, cos pi over three, X minus one minus two. All right. Let's look at this one again, but this time I want you to solve the equation only using cos. So I know it looks like a sine function, but your challenge is going to be 
to use cos to represent this graph. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. All right, so the A value will actually stay the same as will the D value of two and four using our top and bottom formulas. B should give you pi over four, but C is where you have to get a bit creative. This right here is probably where the coast graph would start. And this looks like a C value of two. So our equation would be y equals two cos x, or pi over four, sorry, times x minus two plus four. All right, let's go ahead and some, take some notes on this. Um, what we're doing here is we are determining, determining the equation given a trig graph. And the way we do this is A, B, and D, they all have formulas. So B will be two pi over the period, or period is two pi over B, it's the same formula, just rewritten slightly differently. A is related to top minus bottom, over two, D is top plus bottom over two. Now C is the tricky one, right? For C, you have to look for a starting point. Look for a starting point because that's gonna give you the key for determining where the graph starts and that tells you the horizontal translation. And of course, you do have to make a selection. Are you using sine or are you using cos? Sine, again, is for when you have more of that wave action up and down. Cos is when you more see some kind of valley shape or, of course, a hill if it's been reflected. So for an example here, let me just give you a quick sketch. Um, let's maybe do one, two, three. Um, I'm going to start maybe right there. I'm going to go up, down, kind of like that. So I'll give like a rough sketch. And I'll tell you this point over here is at pi. This is at 3 pi and this is at 5 pi. So you need to determine determine an equation that represents this graph that I drew. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a try. All right, well, assuming you went with the sine graph, it looks like we're going up and top and bottom are, are three and one. So there actually doesn't look like an A value. The A value would just be one um, because you're gonna have three minus one over two, which will be two over two or just one. Uh, the B value though will definitely be something. The, the period looks like four pi, that's a little tricky. But you notice this is where it starts and this is where it ends. So if you go from pi all the way to five pi, that's a total of four pi for your period. So if you plug that in, you should end up with B equaling one half. then it looks like the graph has been shifted by pi to the right. And we've moved up two. So that would be the equation for the graph I sketched. Over here, you can go ahead and choose an example to do. Uh, we're working on unit six, worksheet two and you can write down any things to remember. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.